Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners, and I'm the co-founder of Eversound, a company dedicated to improving quality of life for older adults by giving them the gift of hearing. Today, I'm joined by Maya Moskal, a rising sophomore at the University of Kentucky. Maya spent her summer working as a care manager or a CNA at a senior living community in the Reminiscence neighborhood or helping those living with dementia, for those of you that don't know that. I was first brought to light to Maya's story from a friend and want to share it with you all because these are the type of people we should be encouraging to work in senior living. And she's just got an amazing story that I want to help highlight. So thanks for joining me today, Maya. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me on. So Maya, can you share a little bit with us about how you spent your summer? Yeah, so I finished my freshman year of college um, this past May, so May 2022, and I actually got a recommendation from one of my pre-med advisors at school um, to get my CNA just as a step. I'm on the pre-med track, so um, just as like a step to get some more experience um, and to confirm that like what I'm doing is what I want to be doing. Um, so I did. I just did some quick research Um and I kind of partnered my getting, you know, getting my CNA. Um, I also wanted to work. So I knew that I wanted to work. I didn't know what that would look like um, at all. Like, I didn't know if that would be like in an assisted living community or if it would be like in a restaurant. Like I had no idea. Um, I, all I knew was I was getting my CNA. Um, so I got home from school pretty burned out just from freshman year. Um, I loved it, but I was burned out. Um, but I really get energized by like going into my community and helping others, um, one step at a time. Um, so I knew that like, I literally had two days of rest and then I was like up interviewing for like positions. So I did a quick like web search, um, for like CNA positions. And I found one in the assisted living community, um, in the memory care community, like you said. So I applied online, um, and I was brought in for an interview and I got the job. And I was like terrified at first. I like came home and cried to my mom because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I haven't even started my CNA class, but like you don't need your CNA um, to work in these places. So I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm going to be awful, um, but I ended up loving it. Um, so I spent my whole summer working with my memory care residents. We had about, I mean, give or take, because people would move in and move out. Um, about 25 residents um, at a time. So pr pretty much five days a week. Um, the shifts were eight hours, but I was usually there for 12 just because there's a major staffing shortage, um, like really awfully. So they were just so short. So I would spend my whole day, pretty much every day, um, working with my memory care residents alongside getting my CNA. That's awesome. Sounds yeah. like an awesome summer well spent, especially, you know, where you are and being able to work to, I mean, I know it's always important to work during the summers. I definitely did that. I spent my summers working on a farm, which yeah. was definitely helpful at times, but probably not so much for the future career that I, I had planned. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I know you had mentioned you're on this pre-med track, you're going to the yeah. University of Kentucky and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of recommended to become the CNA and do the summer, but how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. So really, just like I said, my pre-med advisor, like, well, I've always known I wanted to be like in the medical field. So I knew that going into college, but then one of my pre-med advisors was just like, Hey, I think you should get your CNA this summer. Like, I think it would be a great resume builder. I think it would be a great personality booster, like, you know, further than the resume, I think you should just get your CNA and like, see if you really like this. And I was like, okay. Um, so I, like I said, did a quick search and I found a program and I got my CNA. Um, so that kind of, I'll tell you a little bit how that looked. So that was the first month of my summer. Um, and I spent three weeks in the classroom, nine to two, um, with a program named Nats in here in Nashville. Um, and so I was there for three weeks, um, every day in the classroom, um, doing skills and knowledge based type of stuff, basically just preparing for the state exam. Um, and then there was one week in clinical, which was 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., um, Monday through Friday, so 40 hours in this week at a long-term care facility. Um, so that's kind of how I got, like, my CNA. And then in terms of assisted living, um, it goes, like, more personal. So my grandma, she had Alzheimer's, and she actually passed away with it a few years back. But she spent the last few years of her life in a memory care community. So that's how I know about assisted living. Um, but I 
do feel like it's very like underrated assisted living. And I feel like people don't know about it. Um, they just know about nursing homes and they know about like the long-term care facility that I was in for my clinical, for my CNA. Um, but there's something so special about assisted living that I didn't know until um, I worked in it. You know, it's such a, so much more community-based than a hospital setting long, long-term care facility. It really promotes like life and like living life rather than like sitting in your hospital bed all day long, um, which is what these residents with memory care um, needs need and crave. So that's kind of how I got to where I am today. And so, yeah, I knew about these assist living places from my grandma and from personal experience. Um, but I probably wouldn't have known about them if I didn't have my grandmother um, living with dementia. So, yeah, I think that's unfortunately kind of the perception of, of our society, especially when they think of senior living, everyone's kind of stuck in that mindset of the, the older nursing home, which I, I knew I was before I, you know, just kind of jumped right into it. And there's, right. you know, senior living, it's got the the word living in it for a reason. It's, it's trying right. to help these people live, you know, the best years of their life. Um, right. And I'm curious, so like, what does a, a day to day look like for you as a CNA? Yeah, so in my, I guess, I'm, I'm still kind of, um, I'm PRN at the assisted living building I work at. So I guess my current company, um, I worked the six to two shift, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, actually, when I was doing my CNA class that first month of my summer, I was doing the 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift. So I would go to my CNA class in the morning from nine to two, and then I'd just be like 30 minutes late. Um, like that was fine with my manager. Um, so I'd get there around 2.30 at my job and then work until 10. So I was pretty much running from 9 a.m. or 8 till 10. Um, anyway, so then after my CNA class, um, I switched to first shift because I just liked it better. Like I just personally like liked how things rolled. It was much more fast paced, um, less sundowning with the residents, which is basically where they just get more irritable in the afternoon. So it's harder to do activities with them in the afternoon. So I just liked the first shift better. So I would basically wake up at 530 in the morning ish, sometimes 540 um, roll out of bed, like drag myself out of bed. Worst part of of the job is like getting out of bed at six in the morning. I hated it. Um, but I get to work at 6 a.m. And as soon as I like walked through the doors, I was like on it. I was so excited to be there. Um, like a, a switch flipped and I was like so happy to be there. So I would start work at six. Um, we would help get residents up and ready for the day until about 8.30. So that process took about two, two and a half hours. Um, and then we would have breakfast at 8.30. Um, breakfast usually wrapped up around... 9, 30, 10. I mean, residents would sit around the tables and talk with us, um, stuff like that, talk with each other. And then we had an activities person um, and she would do activities with the residents until lunchtime. Um, and then us care managers, we would, you know, take people one by one to help them change and shower, um, you know, do some like housekeeping stuff like that, um, participate in some of the activities. And then after lunch, um, again, putting people um, helping them get ready for a nap, um, helping them do other activities, you know, just kind of whatever people wanted to do. Um, it's like a normal like day at home, just mm. with, you know, like think of a normal day, a chill day at home, um, just in a senior living community with some friends, some older friends. Um, so that's like kind of how I saw it. Um, and then I would usually wrap up around two and less um, the staffing shortage was awful. Um, most nights I would stay until around six thirty-seven, just to help through dinner, um, and help some people get ready for bed. Um, so that was kind of a day-to-day -day life. And I worked five days, sometimes six days a week. Um, yeah, really, really hard, like really hard work, yeah. but still rewarding. So, yeah, no, I love it. And, um, yeah, can, I can only imagine all the experiences and the stories you kind of yeah. come come walking out of that. And I know I know before we started recording, you had mentioned like none of your friends have really even explored yeah. or, or thought about something like this. So, you know, what would you say to other whether it's nursing students, pre-med students, even just college students in general um, that might be considering what you did over the summer or might not even be on the radar? What would you say to those people? Yeah, I would just say, like, do it, like just take risks. You never know what could come out of any chance you might take. Um, like I said, 
after I got hired for this position that I had have, um, I like literally came home and I cried to my mom because I was like, I am so nervous. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I am, I'm like, what if they hate me? What if everyone hates me? You know, just like the whole world is awful basically type of deal. Um, but then like once I was in the field and like on the floor, like I just learned to love it. Um, professionally, I gained so, so much hands-on experience that I think, you know, I, I don't like to compare, but I think that like not a lot of my other friends that are in pre-med had the same hands-on experience. Um, you know, even the CNA class, like I had experience in my clinical week, but I didn't have the hands-on experience that I had working in the senior living community. Um, like I was able to go to my CNA class in the morning and then literally apply the exact skills I learned to my job that same day. And so it just helped me really like learn these skills and um, yeah, I would just say, do it, like take risks. Um, and kind of on a more personal note, like I, something I didn't expect, I guess, um, coming out of this summer was the relationships that I made with not only like my fellow employees, um, but the residents, like I have like 25 new 80 year old best friends, like seriously, um, which I think in more of like a long term care facility, I don't know if that's possible. And I don't know because I, you know, didn't spend my summer working in one, but I can say in a senior living community, it's so possible to just like fall in love with these residents because you're working with the same people every day and they might not remember me, but I remember them and I always will. I love it. Yeah. So going into, you know, a new school year here, yeah. and I'm sure you're looking at things. What's, what do you consider doing next? Yeah, I'm honestly not a hundred percent sure yet. Um, like world is my oyster type of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I came into this summer having no idea what I was doing and it worked out in the best way I ever could have ima imagined. So I'm kind of like, I don't really know. I'm going to just settle into like school first, just my sophomore year, um, get my feet planted. And then I might try and reach out and try and find a position PRN um, just with my school schedule. And I might be trying to graduate early. You know, I just I'm taking a lot of credits. So I, but I do want to like work like I just like loved working this summer. So I do. I am considering going PRN at some sort of assisted living community up in Lexington. But I'm not 100 percent sure yet. And. I'm not like freaking out about it either. I'm kind of just like, whatever happens will happen. <laughs> hey, that's the best mentality to have. As you had mentioned, yeah. the world is absolutely your oyster. I'm, you know, 33, 34. I forget nowadays. I still don't know what I want to do and just take right. it one day at a time and can control what you can right. control. That's all you got to do. That's right. Um, and so Maya, you had mentioned, you know, over the course of this of just like, you know, it was very evident to you, right. Of staffing shortages and what's, yeah. what's happening there. Um, you know, it's no question that senior living is in dire need to hire more people. I think a lot of Absolutely. industries can say that, you know, especially on the nursing side of things. Do you have any thoughts on how us as an industry can better market and recruit to college students today? Yeah, I, you know, I really, I have a few ideas. I don't like know what the answer is, obviously, but one of my ideas is just social media, actually. Um, I don't know exactly how, but I think like social media is our friend in this type of situation. Um, earlier in the summer, I saw this girl on TikTok and she was also working in an assisted living community um, like me with the memory care residents. And she had this like huge fan base and it was basically just like, get ready with me, you know, put my scrubs on or my, you know, outfit on for the day. And I'm about to go in and like help my memory care residents. And obviously like, that wasn't me, but like, that was some other girl, but she had this huge fan base and they were all like, wait, what are you doing? Like, wait, where are you going? Wait, where do you work? And they were interested. Um, so I think social media could be our friend in this situation. Um, and then also just like kind of networking to colleges and to like pre-med advisors, um, at colleges slash nursing advisors, um, because my role was more of nursing. Um, but I still loved it. Um, yeah, I just, when I, when I was recommended to get my CNA, it was kind of just like, get like, you know, you would get your CNA and then you would work in a hospital as a CNA, or you would work in a long-term care. And I was like, 
okay, like I didn't, you know, no one told me like assisted living was an option. And again, like I said, the only way that I knew that assisted living was an option was from personal experience from my grandmother. Um, but I do think like networking out to pre-med advisors, you know, this is like, we have an opportunity, like we need college students. We would love to have college students would be a great way um, because then pre-med advisors could say, you know, see, get your CNA or not, because again, like they trained me in-house. Um, I technically didn't need my CNA. Get your CNA and then work. You could work in an assisted living community. They would love to have you. Um, so just networking to colleges directly would be great. Yeah, no, I think it's it's so valuable. And there's, I think, yeah. TikTok's on the rise. I actually just launched my own TikTok the other day just to bring more yeah. awareness to uh, senior living. It's yeah. just been videos of my daughter, which I need to stop doing. But uh, <laughs> no, I think you make some some great points. And I yeah. think, you know, there's a lot to, a lot of opportunity there to just bring right. awareness of what senior living's all about, right? And I think right. talking to people where they're at. So the college advisors, hey, you know, they're having a lot of conversations with you. And then the social media side, you know, to help capture those stories and those Absolutely. relationships um, yeah. is what it's all about. And so my final question here for you, any other final thoughts you want to share with our listeners? Yeah, just I mean, you really never know how impactful someone or something, I guess, will be until you give it time and energy. Um, I think one of my favorite sayings ever is um, you get out what you get, what you give, you know, you get out what you put in. Um, So like I said, like, it's kind of ironic because I cried after I got this position, but then I also cried leaving for the last time. Um, because, uh, because I just gave it so much and it really felt like home over the course of the summer, whether that was the people or just like the place, you know, like the residents, the, my fellow employees. Love it. Well, yeah. Maya, thanks so much for joining and, and sharing your story. I know you'll ins- inspire some people out there. Um, so thank you for all that you do. The world is your oyster and excited to see how you help influence this world for the better. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Matt.